Don't we all make mistakes every once in a while? Yesterday morning, I poured myself a nice little cup of coffee, and I dropped my favorite mug. Bam! There goes my mug. Happens to the best of us, right? Now, I challenge you to imagine you have a household robot that takes up kitchen chores. Your robot drops your favorite mug. What would you think? Should robots be perfect? My name is Nicole Munich, and I don't like perfect robots. I don't mind them making mistakes. To err is a robot. You might not think that, but there are a lot of similarities between humans and robots. Us humans, we are not made to be perfect. But I'm sure that each and every one of us knows at least one person who is just perfect. How they talk, how they look, the way how they are just the nicest person ever. It's irritating, right? <laughs> and do you know why? There's this discrepancy between how we want to feel about these people and how we feel about them. <laughs> the problem is that someone who is apparently perfect makes us aware of our own imperfection, which most people find discomforting. And that, in turn, makes us like this perfect person just a little less than what we would have liked someone not so perfect. And this psychological phenomenon is called the pratfall effect. This is where it gets interesting, because the same effect holds true for robots. I was fascinated since, from robots since my early childhood, and this curiosity stays with me, and it motivated me to get into this field of research. As researchers, when we study robots, we have to envision how the interaction between a human and a robot looks like. We script scenarios for strictly controlled experiments. That can be problematic because interactions are in so many ways unpredictable and they have thousands of possible outcomes. When human and robot meet, reality kicks in and things do not go according to plan. Data of such incidents is then usually discarded because it does not comply with the controlled experiments. But this is when I become interested with the data. In our research team, we looked at a massive amount of let me call it rubbish data. Video recorded instances of human-robot interaction where something went sideways. We analyzed the situations where a robot made a mistake, and from that we learned what kinds of mistakes robots make and how people most likely react. Based on this knowledge, we replicated robot errors in lab experiments. And we were surprised to find that the Pratfall effect equally holds true for robots. People preferred a robot making errors over a perfect one. Now, let me insert a small but important disclaimer at this point. This finding only accounts for non-critical applications. If you're now thinking medical robots, autonomous cars and the like, I have to disappoint you. Those have to be perfect. Most likely, you will wonder now why people preferred a robot making errors. So did we. And in order to explain this, we looked at other theories. One explanation lies in the media equation theory, which claims that even small cues in technology are sufficient to make people relate to them and treat them like actual people. Let me give you an example. How many of you own a vacuum cleaning robot? <laughs> and how many of you have named their robots? Well, I see the population of vacuum cleaning robots in Kuchel is not very high as such. <laughs> when I first unpacked my vacuum cleaning robot, my tech card instantly sparked. I could just not get enough of watching it clean my floors. I even carried it downstairs to my neighbors and asked if I could clean their flat as well so I can watch again. My flatmate back then, she was not into technology at all, and she could not understand my excitement. I invited her to use the robot, but she would simply ignore it and use our old vacuum instead. Until one day when I had a brilliant idea. Let me show you. I put a pair of wiggly eyes on the robot, so now it has a face. And I told my flatmate it's now called Herbert. <laughs> and guess what? The next day, when I came home from work, I found my flatmate with Herbert in her room. 
where she said, Herbert, come here, you missed a spot. <laughs> Thanks, Herbert. And just for the record, not even researchers studying social robots are completely immune to this. Herbert is listed in the acknowledgments of my thesis. He made a good source of inspiration after all. Vacuum cleaners often get stuck when they can't get over a threshold or when they eat something that is not robot safe, such as a sock or the cable of your mobile charger. From a technological perspective, it's incredibly challenging to make them not do such things. But seriously, why do we even bother? Us humans, we're not perfect. So isn't a non-perfect robot just a better flatmate for us? Imagine, you come home and you find your vacuum cleaning robot stuck because it ate one of your socks. <laughs> you have to go and remove the sock. You have to pick up the robot and carry it back to its charging station because it very likely ran out of power trying to digest your sock. <laughs> now that is annoying because it makes us take on unnecessary tasks. But what if the robot was aware it made a mistake and apologized to you or made a funny comment? Wouldn't you relate much more to its situation? Vacuum cleaning robots are a good example here, but I'm really thinking of every technology that we socially engage with. This can be your smart fridge, a mobile app, or a chatbot. Why, instead of trying to create a perfect piece of technology, don't we design them in a way that they deal with their intrinsic flaws instead? Let me drill down into the fridge some more. Imagine, your smart fridge usually knows when you're running low on milk, and it automatically places an order with your local grocery store. Before you even realize a potential shortcoming in your favorite dairy product, fresh supply is auto-delivered to your front door. But what if you come home and you find your fridge unable to place an order due to internet connection problems? Wouldn't it be nice if the fridge explained the situation to you and provided you with alternative food choices based on the current contents of your fridge? Let me give you another example. Imagine a service robot at an information desk. In theory, it should give you all sorts of information. But apparently just the one question that you're asking, it cannot answer. Wouldn't it be nice if the robot told you why, it cannot answer your question and gave you other topics that you could ask about. <laughs> Imperfect social technology is believable. It does not create expectations that it cannot meet. My point is that technology that is designed with its potential shortcomings in mind will create a better experience within the human user. It meets us at eye level and this gives us a better feeling about the technology, the interaction with it, and ultimately about ourselves. Learning about the nature of robot errors and their effect in people was only the first step. There is great potential in making technology aware that there is a problem. So if a robot knows that there is a mistake by understanding the human user's reaction to it, it can actively contribute towards solving the problem together with the human. In this spirit, I would like to invite you to embrace your own flaws. And please, be forgiving with technology. Sometimes it's okay to have a non-perfect day. Thank you. <laughs>